Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in a Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why calculation groups are so important. And I'm gonna show you actually how to create your first calculation group. Stay tuned. With this new introduction of external tools in the Power BI desktop, now we can directly connect to Tablet Editor and there's some new capabilities and features that's just right at our fingertips. And one of them is creating calculation groups, okay? And so I decided to do a video to talk about why calculation groups are so important, how they can help enhance your model and show you how to create them, okay? And so why are they so important? That's where I wanna start. I wanna start, with why are they so important? Imagine you have a model and you create a couple of measures. Let's just say you create two, and then someone says, hey Patrick, I need a month today calculation and a year today calculation and a previous year calculation and a year over year calculation. What do you have to do? You have to create a corresponding, you have to create four or five corresponding measures for each measure in your model. That is a lot of work. With calculation groups, you can minimize that work. And that's what I'm gonna show you, all right? That's why they're so important. So instead of all this talking, you guys know all I like to do, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Imagine you have this model that, that I've built. And I have a slicer on this page, and we'll get back to that in a little bit. If you expand internet sales, you'll see I have two groups, right? I have a folder that has all my measures in it. I have two folders under that folder, one for quantity and one for sales. And so I started out with just this, this quantity measure and the sales measure, then the requirements grew. They say, hey Patrick, we need a quantity month to date and a sales month to date. We need a quantity previous year and a sales previous year and on and on and so forth. And you can see how my measures just exploded and I wasn't happy about it. But these are typical requirements that, you know, that must be met when you're designing a model that's built for reporting. And so how do you minimize the number of measures you create? Calculation groups, let me show you. You can see I have all these measures. I'm gonna eliminate the need for those measures by creating a calculation group, right? There's a couple of ways you can go about this, but the easiest way is if you're running the July 2020 version of the desktop, you'll see this external tools option in the ribbon. Go ahead and click it. If you downloaded the latest version of Tabular Editor, you'll see Tabular Editor is one of the external tools. Go ahead and click it. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up Tablet Editor already connected to my model. This is great, it's awesome. Head over here to the model and you'll see lots of different folders. We're gonna focus in on our tables because this is where you create your calculation group. Right click on the table, choose create new and select calculation group from the menu that appears. And then you'll see a new calculation group. You can call this whatever you want. Let's just call ours time intelligence. Okay, if you expand this out, this is just a single column table. Okay, it's gonna have one single column in it with multiple rows and these rows will be based on the calculation items that you create. The calculation items are synonymous with those time-based calculations that you want to add in your model, right? And so let's say I'm gonna start with month to date. Okay, and so we're gonna right click on calculation item and say new calculation item. And we're gonna do this month to date, press enter, and then you have your little DAX editor here. To do month to date, it is really, really easy, right? The easiest way to do this, you can type it and freehand this, or you can go back over to your Power BI desktop, expand out your measures, and just look for one of those month to date calculations. Click it, go ahead and copy the formula, everything to the right of the equal sign. Get that on your clipboard, head back to the tablet editor and paste it in. Now, this is the beauty, this is the beauty. I'm about to show you the magic of calculation groups. Instead of explicitly entering the measure, we're gonna use a scalar function that returns the selected measure. The measure that's used in the context of the visual that you're creating, the matrix, the table, whatever it is, right? So we're gonna replace that with selected measures. So if we drag sales to the table, it's gonna calculate month to date for sales. If we drag quantity, it's gonna calculate for, it's gonna do that for quantity, okay? And then if we wanna check this out, if we just go ahead, we got a couple of things we can do. If we click right here, format, that format works, you're syntactically correct. And then we're gonna repeat this for every one of those time-based calculations. So I'm gonna do this and Adam may speed this up while I quickly add all these, all right? Whew, that 
that was a lot of typing, but you need to do that once for each one of those time-based analysis. You add those calculation items, and they'll actually, when you when we finish this up, you'll see it creates a nice little table with a list of those calculation items, and we can use those for some, some neat little tricks inside the desktop, all right? Back to my desktop. So now that it's all created, we have all of these created, all of our time-based calculations created. All we need to do now is click File and click Save, and if we head back over to the desktop, you'll see it says, hey, we need to refresh because it need, it's creating a table and it needs to refresh the contents of that table. So go ahead and click refresh. And what will happen is it's working on it. If we collapse this out, you'll see our new time intelligence table. Right. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Patrick, it's just a name. It's just a single name there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Watch. Watch how cool this is. Watch how cool this is. We're going to add a matrix to our design surface. And then we're gonna add just the sales as the value, okay? We add our sales as the value. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little hierarchy in, on our rows. We're gonna go year, and so we can expand collapse. We can, see, we can expand and collapse and see the values in there, all right? Really cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the name in our time intelligence table and drag it to columns. And then what you'll see is all of those calculations are just added. I don't need to use all those individual measures automatically. It uses each, it uses the name and it performs the calculation that I created for each calculation item over the given measure that's within that context. Now, I do one more thing. I do one more thing to my, um, to my measures, to my measures. Um, that makes this a little easier because I also want to see the actual current value, right? So let's head back over to Tablet Editor. I'm going to add one more calculation item. We're going to call it current. And then we're going to use that selected measure function. Going to click the formatter and then we're going to go ahead and save it. Yes. Head back to the desktop. Click refresh. It's refreshing. And now you'll see that current, my current sales here. If I look at the previous year, you can see how it's just working, right? This is great. This works so phenomenal. And I don't have to create a million measures. I create my calculation group, grab the measure I want, drag the measure I want in the context of the visual, right? Add it to that visual and then use the items in that name column in my calculation group. And I can see the different calculations that I've created. And I know what you're thinking, Patrick, but what if I only want to see the previous year, the current year, the current year and the previous year are multi selection of these well guess what it's so easy to do let me show you head back over to the design surface expand time intelligence the name of your calculation group drag name right there and we're going to make name a slicer and what we're going to do with it we're going to say go over to format and go over to selection controls and we're going to turn multi-select with control off because we just want to multi-select and now i'm going to use the current one and i want to use previous year and now you can see, right, I'm only using those two. Maybe I only want to do year over year and year over year percent. And you're probably thinking, Patrick, I want to format this. Well, guess what? If I head right back over to Tablet Editor, I can click on this and you see the format string right there. I can easily type up my format string 0.0 because .0, I only want two decimal places percent. And I'm going to click save. Yep head back over to the desktop and boom now i have percentages now you may be thinking patrick can't we do this dynamically with calculation groups of course you can and if you stay tuned to our, our channel i'm sure one of us adam or myself will create a video on it all right what do you guys think are you using calculation groups have you encountered them what do you think about the video do you have any questions comments you know what to do let's continue the conversation where in the comments below it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button if you like my video give me a big thumbs up as always from adam and myself thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video